MySpace. Has <laughs> anyone ever check in there as a joke to yourself? <laughs> I can't remember the password. <laughs> but um, he got back to us like two days later, like, yeah, this looks awesome, sent me the whole thing. I was like, I guess I should send it. And Jen was like, it's not him. And she was like, be sassy. And I was like, I guess I should send it to your representation at CAA. He's like, yeah, yeah, send it over. I'm like, okay, thank you, Mr. Rowe. <laughs> he was very sweet. He, uh, he, uh, watched it. He got back from shooting Inglorious Bastards and he's like, I was just going to watch it for a couple of minutes and I ended up watching the whole thing. I, I loved it. It was a blast. And then, he's, and then later he was like, um, is it is this a final edit? Are you open to some criticism? I'm like, yeah, I'll take some criticism. So I got this much back. I, I, I did take some of it. Some of it I was like, oh, I don't want to say this, but I'm like, I actually don't like that and I don't like this part, but this part is actually really smart. And uh, He's so nice. I mean, he didn't have to give us advice. He didn't have to be helpful. He didn't have to say, when people are like, oh, are there any independent women making horror movies? He didn't have to say, the twins and Dead Hook Printed Trunk. And that changed so much for us. And then on American Mary, it was so funny. The only reason the movie happened was because of Eli Roth. It's not that he produced it or anything. I lied to him. He was like, well, he knew we were struggling with Dead Hook Printed Trunk. And I was like, I can't pay for anything, I'm in the hospital because everyone's sick and blah blah. And he's like, well, just focus on your next movie, what scripts you have. And I was like, I had nothing, but I didn't want to tell him. So I was like, I have so many. You tell me which one you want to read. And I was like, this one, and this one about the medical student. He's like, the medical student one. I was like, oh, okay. So I'll, I just want to make sure there's no typos, Mr. Roth. So I'll, um, I'll check it and I'll send it over to you in two weeks. And I look at Jen, I was like, I just lied to Eli Roth that we had a script about a man costume. We need to write something now. <laughs> Two weeks later. It's amazing how Eli Roth just saying, yeah, I like Dead Hooker in a Trunk. It's fucking awesome. Changed everything for us. Uh, like Robert, we kept a dead hooker diary while we were making it, and it became like the most depressing <laughs> diary that I probably will never release. And if I do, I'll have to black out all the names. It's not inspirational. It's, it's the opposite of inspirational. And I remember my last entry, which was the day before Eli Roth got in touch with us, was, I'm a fuck up. I made the biggest mistake of my life. I've cost myself, my friends, my family so much stress and so much money and so much debt. And I'm not a filmmaker. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And I've totally fucked up. This is worse than Rodriguez when he fucked up because no Weinstein is coming to save my ass. And then the very next day, things became much, much better. At Comic-Con this year, we were, we were struggling. I was like, so that's it. After fucking waiting tables at some place that maybe nobody will recognize. And being like, hey, didn't you used to be Eddie Valiant? <laughs> did you change your name to Jack Daniels? <laughs> I did change my name to Jack Daniels for a while. I did admit to him that I lied, and he's like, well, you were able to pull it off. And guys, if you can lie and then pull it off, that's both movies. I mean, I mean that's horrible advice, but if you can pull it off and lie, you're like, I have it right now. That's the only bad thing about a lie. When you can't make up for the lie, if you say, yeah, I have ten cats, go get ten cats. <laughs> <laughs> Even more cats showed up. So the lie is solid. I mean, the truth. Is solid. And then while we were working on the film, and I had never worked with a crew before, I was pulling wires and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm helping. They're like, sit in your chair. I'm like, my director chair? No, 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 no. I just, didn't, I just didn't know what to do. Every morning I would hug people so happy that the crew came back. I was just like, it was crazy. When the first time we pulled up, I was like, oh, who's filming here? Oh my god, is that us? Oh, the trucks. And when shit went weird, I would just text him and be like, um, this happened. Uh, is it normal? And he'd be like, actually, normal. And he'd give us advice. And he gave us the harshest but most brutally honest advice. When you ask for advice from someone, never ask for good advice. They will give you the harshest reality, and that's the best, because if they say, oh, everything's wonderful, you're full of shit. <laughs> In uh, American Mary, how Dr. Grant always says, don't fuck up. That's Eli. Eli always said, don't fuck up your thumb. Well, we finished the first day. Yeah, it's one day out of 15, don't fuck up. He's like, I won't. <laughs> he put the fear of God in us, though. He did. So be afraid and lie.